Hey there! It's the Latvian language teacher Ilze B with my Friday video. But my video today will be different because I will have a guest. My guest will be Abigail Fulbrook, who is an English language teacher who lives in Japan. And today we will share our experiences, what it means to live in a country far away from our birth country and how that has changed us as language teachers. So, please welcome my guest, Abigail Fulbrook. Hi, Abigail. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you so much for joining me for, for this conversation. You're welcome. And uh, I, I will explain to my viewers that we both, we are language teachers, but Abigail is teaching English. She's a native English speaker and she lives in Japan and I teach Latvian to English speakers. And I don't live in Latvia, I live in the United States, so we both live outside of our native environment, so to say. And uh, Abigail, how comes that you live in Japan? Well, I only came here for a year originally. That was my plan. Um, so I, I've been teaching English for 10 years before I was an English teacher in the UK. And uh, I decided I would like to go and see the world. And uh, Japan came up as a, as a choice. And I took the opportunity to work in a language school here. Um, I really enjoyed it. And then I met a man and you know how it goes, you fall in love and we, I stayed and it's been seven years now in Japan. So we have very similar stories. I met a man too and that's why I'm here in the United States. <laughs> yes, I absolutely understand you how it happened. <laughs> do you like living in Japan? Yes, I do. I really do. It's, um, it's a very uh, convenient country and I mean like everything is um, the customer service and, and things like that is so very um, good. It's very clean where I live and it's very safe as well. Mm -hmm. So did you find it very different from where you lived before in the UK? Um, I think Japanese people actually and British people have quite a lot in common. Mm -hmm. We're quite um, introverted and quiet and reserved people. Um, and we don't say what we're really thinking. Um, I think a lot of people come to Japan and they're a bit, they think Japan, Japanese people are really mysterious and are very polite. And I, I, don't, I don't really agree. I think no, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. I think I think we yeah we're very private and we we don't like to share our feelings in a in a big way and um, yeah so it's, maybe that comes across as as kind of secretive and a bit reserved and cold. Yeah. Um, I don't know. For me, that's natural, <laughs> so I don't really <laughs> do it. Um, so yeah for me in that way it was very easy to get into living in japan and i you know people other people come here and they say well it's really hard to make friends all right we we just <laughs> Sorry. Had, we just Sorry. Had, we just had some technical issues and because the abigail's microphone stopped working but now we are back and <laughs> uh, so you started saying that you people come there uh, to, to, to Japan and they think that it would be difficult to make friends and is, is that actually so? Well, yeah, for me, um, anywhere you go, it's, it's not easy to make friends. Um, and so some people uh, expect you know, when your friends, you go to people's, your friend's house and you hang out in their house. And that doesn't really happen in Japan, not mm -hmm. even between Japanese people. So um, you kind of have to, all your friendship is outside. You meet at restaurants or you, you meet in the, in the park if you've got kids. So yeah, going, going to someone's house is really a big deal. 
But so, you said that it was easy for you because you feel like your mentality is similar to uh, that of Japanese people, but at the same <laughs> time, it wasn't easy. Is it? Does it go both ways? Yeah, I think it's it's easy to meet people, and as a teacher, I'm meeting people all the time, and um, like having quite good conversations in lessons. Right. Yes. So, yeah, in that way. You can meet a lot of people, but uh, yeah, forming deeper relationships. Um, oh, right. I think yeah, if you if you move to a new country anywhere, it, it's harder to get those deeper relationships going. Yes, yes so, you you have to be proactive. That's at least my my experience. I had definitely. to really work on forming relationships. So that's that's hard work for me. Yes. So, yeah. So, who are your friends? Are they Japanese people mostly, or English speaking people? Um, actually, I think I've I've got a good mix, um, uh -huh. and that's actually one of the benefits of having kids. Um, when I got pregnant, I was kind of afraid I was going to be really isolated, um, but here um, I live near Tokyo, so we have a big international community. And there's a big mothers group, mm -hmm. um, and they have different. Um, they have meetings. They have on, an online group, and there's lots of people in the same situation. So we're all trying to meet up. We're all trying to make friends. So actually, having kids has been really good <laughs> for my social life, and and now they're going to daycare. So I meet Japanese mums mm -hmm. that way. Um, and it's, yeah, I've been, it's a whole other layer of um, sort of community and relationships now. And that brings me to the next question. Of course, if you have Japanese friends, have you tried learning Japanese? And how was it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm still learning. It's a long process. So, yeah, before I came to Japan, I didn't speak any Japanese. Um, I couldn't read or write. Mm -hmm. um so yeah it's really essential there's um yeah so i tried lots of different things um the city where i live has volunteer lessons mm -hmm. so local local person will volunteer and, and teach foreigners to speak mm -hmm. japanese um, how that, do you remember at the very beginning how did you start i'm sorry I, i'm interrupting you but how, how did you actually start? It's such a blur. <laughs> how did I start? Maybe I I did start with these volunteer lessons, uh -huh. and they kind of because the the teachers are not trained; they are volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, they it's kind of sink, sink or swim. So they you go in, into the lesson, and the teacher starts talking to you in Japanese. You know? uh -huh. Okay, and you, yeah, you kind of have to survive. So you um, were forced to learn uh, using this immersion method. That yeah, some yeah. People, <laughs> some people yeah. really are thrilled about, and some people not so much. How do you think about immersion? Yeah, so immersion. I have I have mixed feelings. Uh -huh. I think if you're um, if you're immersed, if you're in the environment, and you've got it all the time. It's pretty good for your pronunciation and it's pretty yeah. good for your listening skills. Yeah. Um, but uh, maybe you're reading. So in Japanese, um, you have to learn all the characters. Right. And it, it's quite good if you, you're reading, that you're seeing the same sort of characters like entry and exit. You see those everywhere. Uh -huh. um, but um, if you're an English speaker, it's also pretty easy to survive only in English. Right. And you can get by um, with just English quite, quite well. You have a certain level of, of quality of life. Um, so, you know, local governments provide information in English, um, the central government as well. Um, people are very uh, conscious that they, they want to... Uh, provide services in English. So being uh -huh. an English speaker, 
you you kind of I don't know <laughs> the immersion thing is not complete mm -hmm. um, because there's a lot of English out there you need to really have that desire to learn the language by yourself yes. so, yeah so uh, talk, still uh, just talking a little bit more about immersion immersion as I as I think of pure immersion that would be listening and repeating words or or sounds it wouldn't be really writing what was the first thing that you learned was it uh, spoken language and then you tried to learn those characters or how did the teachers that taught to you uh, what did mm. they do I think for, for Japanese, Japanese is a really literate country, so everyone can read and write, and and they everything is written. Mm -hmm. So there's instructions everywhere. When you go to the bathroom, in a public bathroom, there's like four signs telling you where the flush is, where to put the paper, don't forget your umbrella, here's the door. And and everything is written. And teachers right. as well write. Um, so I found with my volunteer, she was writing things and I, I, don't know, I can't, I can't read it. So I had to learn, I had to learn fast. And luckily you can learn, you can learn, uh, one set of characters that Japanese, uh, language uses. You can learn that in a couple of weeks. Was it difficult to learn the sounds? Because I assume that the sounds are different to pronounce the sounds. And yeah, actually not so different to English. Hmm. There's not too many sounds that are um, strange. There's a, just a couple that English speakers don't, don't do very well. Mm -hmm. But actually when you've learnt the, the first set of characters, the hiragana, um, it's a lot easier to understand pronunciation because right. it's all phonetic. Yeah. And, and then, uh, yeah, you can understand what's being said i found more more easily it's more easy to understand and does that help you to memorize the words when you see them written down um then well yeah there's another there's another level of difficulty to japanese uh -huh. which is the the chinese characters that they use which are are not phonetic uh, you just have, like uh, in, Ch in Chinese, you just have to recognize mm -hmm. them. So, uh, yeah, it adds another level of difficulty when you've got that. And the, and the vocabulary is so different to English. Right. So you have to learn a lot of it. That's the most difficult thing that I find, is you have to learn a lot of vocabulary. Vocabulary. Uh, but not, yeah. not the sounds particularly. Not the sounds, yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's okay. But the, the vocabulary and the Chinese characters, right. that's, the, that's the tricky part. So, and you still teach English, uh, as we established, and how has this, your being a student of Japanese and learning a language, has it changed you as a teacher? Have you gained a new understanding what it, uh, takes to be a student and how to be a better teacher if you could share about that a little bit. Yes, I realized how How difficult it is to learn another language and how much um, You need your teacher to give you lots of information and um, you know, especially uh, the the pronunciation and um, the the vocabulary and I want my teacher to give me lots of information they're, they're, but they're trying especially with English teachers we we are trained and we, we're trained to elicit and like get it out of the students yeah. but no I don't know anything please <laughs> give, me, give me more right. so, um, yeah I'm more now as a teacher I'm more giving and I say, here is, here is what you need to say. Say this. Don't say that. Say this. That is um, very interesting. That's, uh, that's the useful information. I like <laughs> to give, and I always wonder if I give too much and my students cannot memorize it all. But, yes, that's, that's very interesting, this person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I realized yeah. as, a, as a teacher, we kind of 
you know, we, we've taught, so we've done whatever, present simple tense, and we think, oh, they've yeah. we've done that. Easy. You should know that by now. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, no, I don't remember. I can't remember. Let's do it again, please. Yeah. So, yeah, to be more sympathetic as the teacher. <laughs> True. For sure. <laughs> and, and who are your teach uh, your students? I mean, um, are they what levels do you teach? Well, um, mostly. So Japanese people have uh, English lessons at school uh -huh. when they are uh, teenagers. Um, so there's not a lot of absolute beginners out mm -hmm. there. Um, so mostly, my my students now are. Um, not not beginners they're kind of um elementary kind of level mm -hmm. they, they they but they need more confidence in speaking okay. and uh, uh so I've, i'm teaching a lot of women at the moment as well so that's become my um my my thing is uh teaching women and teaching mothers as well uh -huh. and so mostly they are adult learners uh yeah for me i prefer teaching adults mm -hmm. i do occasionally do kids but um i get more satisfaction from teaching adults actually do, and do you teach online yes i do and i'm starting now to do more online mm -hmm. i think it's really uh important for the future so uh what i'm starting to do now is actually speaking coaching uh -huh. so rather than a lesson where we talk like this um this is more focused on actually improving people's speaking um in english and getting things like their their pronunciation correct absolutely correct and um getting the right grammar and the right natural phrases and i actually do it uh by messages uh -huh. so i find it's a lot easier to um give someone feedback if they send me a short message say five minutes and then I can really listen to it and focus and see where are the problems mm -hmm. you know how does how does this this phrase is not quite natural this is this is a bit strange to say your grammar was off there it's a lot more focused mm -hmm. on on tiny tiny details of getting your your English speaking absolutely correct you're talking about recorded messages. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's very interesting. How did you come up with with this idea? Um, it was something that I've I've been thinking about because actually I'd like someone to do it for my Japanese. Uh -huh. So I would love someone just to sit down and go, uh, you know, this is this is wrong. Um, you sh you should say this instead. Try to work on your your pronunciation here is a little bit strange. So. And it's, it's hard to do in a lesson when you're in a lesson and you're, you're just trying to communicate or if you've got a language exchange partner, then you're, you're chatting and, and that's the focus. So I found with messages, it's a lot easier to, to concentrate on the small details. That's so nice. yeah, that's what I, I want to do in Japanese. If there's yeah. any Japanese teachers <laughs> who can do that to me. So I thought, yeah, let's do it for my, my, uh, my learners too. You know. So do you teach groups or do you teach one uh, on one? How, how do you work? Mostly now it, it's one, one on one uh, things. Uh, mm -hmm. So on, online lessons and the, the speaking coaching is all one on one. Um, and yeah, it's a, I think it's a real um, uh, growth area for teachers and for learners and to get right um personal attention from a teacher is is what everyone wants and are you accepting new students as well i definitely am yes i am <laughs> <laughs> i've only got a few places my time is limited mm -hmm. but um yeah i'm uh new new students for the speaking coaching uh -huh. um, so how can people find you so it's uh englishthisweek.com so go there um, all the information is there. Uh, it's englishthisweek.com. Englishthisweek.com. And that's your personal website? 
that's it yes awesome awesome thank you so much it was so so fun to talk to you uh thank you i could go on forever about this <laughs> <laughs> well thank maybe you. we should talk some other time yeah because i think there's a lot to talk about yeah, I'd be happy to know if your viewers have any questions about Japan or about English. I'm really happy to talk about it. That would be, be very interesting. I would have a lot of questions about Japan. <laughs>